I'm certainly biased, but I believe that running an outstanding session of Dungeons & Dragons is one of the most exciting things a group of friends can do for fun. I guess that the reason for that is that role-playing games are one of the few types of entertainment that mix two things humankind has done for millennia. Playing games and telling stories. It doesn't take much to run a fun D&D adventure, but running an outstanding D&D adventure can be sometimes a real challenge. Why? Because great storytelling is hard. So what can we learn from such hit shows as Stranger Things to make our life easier. Truth is, storytelling is a game of repetition. Stealing from classic stories, be them young classics such as Stranger Things or old ones, such as William Shakespeare's plays, is not only something that us Dungeons Masters do or should do, it's at the very heart of storytelling, and I can show you. Sparring a blank sheet of paper armed with only your creativity and imagination can be a brutal brawl. There's no shame of arming yourself with classic stories, mixing and blending and expanding and parodying to the point where something new is created. That is true for all that surrounds a D&D campaign. Its adventures, its locations, and even its encounters. I have created adventures looking for inspiration on the plot of The Lighthouse at the End of the World by Jules Verne. I've created locations based on the mythical Prosperous Island from the play The Tempest by Shakespeare. I've created encounters based on the most iconic boob trap scene of the history of the cinema, the, bo the rolling boulder from Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. The beauty of inspiration is that it's a starting point not an end by itself. You can grasp the essence of your source of inspiration, such as the thrill and the tension of the rolling boulder trap from Indiana Jones, to build something new considering its key elements. A mix of intellectual and physical challenge with different ways to tackle it, but with the urge of doing so on a limited set of time. The same goes for locations. An awe-inspiring scenery, along with an amusing, Tone and mood that I can steal from fictitious settings may be the key to jumpstart my creativity. But why classics are such a powerful inspiration? There are a couple of reasons for that. Harold Bloom, a late American literature critic, claims that Shakespeare has created the way that modern humans are represented in stories. That, on itself, would be enough to value classic stories like those written by Shakespeare. But it goes beyond that. Cuban-Italian writer Italo Calvino defines a classic as a story that we've read countless times by the time we read it for the first time. How? Through the countless times, it has inspired other stories that have already reached us. Would that be true? Few movies and series have made such a powerful statement about that, like Stranger Things. For our own delight, Stranger Things bring, brings strong references to our beloved game. There is no coincidence. The approach that Stranger Things uses to build its plot is very similar to how several DMs do it. Stranger Things has over 90% of appreciation by critics and audience alike. A very, very rare recognition. And one of the main reasons for that is that they steal all the greatest stories from the 80s and retell them, always stitch it together and shaped into a clever and original blockbuster. Just like Quentin Tarantino once said, great artists steal, they don't do homages. As we trace back Stranger Things genealogy, that becomes quite clear. The first episodes of season one has, have many references from E.T., a movie by Steven Spielberg. Spielberg, along with George Lucas, are the creators of Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, whose opening scene is directly inspired by an Uncle Max, a Scrooge McDuck comic book by Karl Barks. The stories by Karl Barks were an ode to imagination that have profoundly marked my youth. 
He would recycle the greatest stories to striking awe young kids like myself, drinking from imaginative plots such as Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne and Lost Horizons by James Hilton. Before making Indiana Jones, George Lucas created the universe of Star Wars in the 70s, to whom The Force Awakens by J.J. Abrams sends a splendid love letter. Before directing a Star Wars movie, Abrams created the hit series Lost in the early 2000s, a phenomenon on its own. Its plot of castaways in a paradise island is a direct reference to The Tempest, a play by William Shakespeare, that inspired not one, but two books by Aldous Huxley, Brave New World and Island. The history of storytelling looks much more like a family tree than a history per se, where great stories give birth to other great stories. If such a host of powerhouses can be connected among themselves, a source of inspiration for one another, why should I, a low-level dungeon master, not do the same? No, not I. I shall stand on shoulder of giants, for such an allegiance will help me survive through the cold edges of the unmerciful blank sheets of paper.